I wasn't really going to do a video on this cart. This is a 2000... Hold on a second. Let's take a look here. This is a 2014 Yamaha Drive. Uh, this one, we had to get picked up. It actually broke down while the customer's kid was driving it, and it, he said he was just driving it, and it shut off on him. Uh, so we got it picked up. The first thing I checked was, obviously, I checked battery voltage. Battery power is good. And let me get my meter. I'll even show you. All right, let's see if I can do this one-handed here. So, negative and positive. So 1270. Uh, so we know the battery's got voltage in it. I'm not going to do a load test on the battery. I don't really need to. It's not necessary at this time. Uh, so I got the cart, turned the key on, which that key I don't think is the right key for this cart. It's kind of funky. And there was nothing. When you stepped on the pedal, you didn't get any clicks. You didn't, there was nothing. It did absolutely nothing. So I came over here to the main fuse and the original fuse was popped. So I replaced the fuse, hit the pedal, and now we're getting clicks out of the solenoid. Uh, the weird thing is, not really the weird thing, but the, the one thing that I did notice is that we're gonna take our voltmeter again. Now this is how you check any solenoid on any gas cart. Uh, actually even in it, mm, well, it's hard to say on an electric cart because some of them do have Oops, some of them do have a, a diode or a resistor across them, so you're not going to get an accurate measurement. But if you take negative battery terminal, hook it up here to your battery, check your meter, make sure you got power. So 1268, 1269. Yamaha's put, decided that putting the solenoid back here, take the seat down. Back in here was a great idea. And by the way, we're doing the new, uh, we got the new GoPro media mod here installed. So I have my, my trusty lav mic back. So now it doesn't matter how far away the camera is and you're not gonna hear any clunking noises from my mount. So there you can see, here's the solenoid right, uh, right here. Okay, this thing with the big red wire coming out of it. What we're gonna do is we're gonna check power there. So. Let me get you set up on a, a mount here so I can do this with my both hands. Now the camera is mounted in a very precarious way. I can't really see what I'm, I can't see what you're seeing at the moment, but uh, all right, so key is on. Now this is, this wire here, this big red one goes down to the starter generator. This one here comes from the battery, this large terminal here. Let's see if I can, See, now you're going to be hearing me getting squished up against things. <laughs> All right, so there we go. That's hooked up. We have 12.69 volts on the large terminal, which is good. That tells me that there's good battery power here. I got this wire here, which goes down to the rest of the cart. This little pigtail. Now we're going to jump over here to this large terminal. This large terminal connects to the starter generator. So when I click this, if the solenoid is bad, you'll have no voltage. Let me see if I can... Okay, so we're gonna click this. And as you can see, we have 12.521. It's actually dropping pretty rapidly, which is really odd. So we have a potential problem with the starter generator. Or there might be another component somewhere else that we're having a problem with. But the battery voltage is dropping kind of quick, which is a little odd. So let me, let me put this here. I don't know if you guys can actually see this or not. I'm going to put the meter on the battery itself. I'm going to turn the lights on. Now they're LED, of course. So. All right, so the lights alone are the only thing on on this cart. And you can see how quick the battery voltage is dropping. So before we go into anything too far related to anything else, uh, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to I'm going to jam my meter here into that. I'm going to leave it sitting right there so you guys can see the voltmeter. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab my one of my load testers here. And when I hook the load tester up to the battery and load it up, the battery voltage should still drop. 
do we just have a, a cell in the battery that's failed? Or do we have another problem somewhere else? So this is the second step in diagnosing, or it could be the first step if you want to go through this anyway. All right, so I'm going to load it up now. So you can see the voltage is dropping 11.2. I'm holding and the needle on the load tester here isn't dropping very much. And I'm going to release. Okay, so you can see the battery is recovering nicely. It's doing exactly what it's supposed to do. Now this is a 100 amp load. Okay. It smells like an old quartz heater. <laughs> Because these are, they're basically just a giant resistor. All right, so now we, we can confirm the battery's good, okay? I'll shut the lights off here. And just for poop and laughter, I'm going to still keep you guys on the... So we're going to use this solar test here now that I've dropped the meter. I'm going to do another load test, another battery test with my automotive style battery meter here. This is going to tell me the condition of the battery itself. Uh, since we can't ch test the charging system since the cart's not running. You don't have to go through this step. This is just something that I'm doing because I want to see what the story is here. So this is a... Uh, okay, it looks like I have a bad connection here. Okay, cranking amps is 460 at zero. So battery test, flooded, cranking amps. Uh, we're going to set... I'm, I don't care if this says it's good or bad. I just want to see what the uh, result is. Okay, so I had the battery tester set at 650 cranking amps, cold cranking amps. And you can see here, it's showing good, showing that there's 624 cold cranking amps. So that's way above original spec. So that's a good thing. So we know the battery is not the problem at all on this cart. We can completely eliminate the battery being any issue. So what we have to now get into a little further is we have power at the solenoid. It's get, making it past the solenoid and it's going down to the starter generator. So we have an issue at the starter generator. So let me reposition you here and we'll kind of take a look at some things. All right, so let's jump on the cart here. So I've already popped off one of the access covers on starter generator. So inside here, hopefully you can see this. You can see one of the, possibly see one of the brushes. So this brush right here is not stuck and it's got, it's not even at end of life. It's probably maybe halfway if that, but that's only part of the story. That's only a quarter of the story because there are four of these. And, uh, but one thing I, I don't know if you just caught that, but I just did. This terminal has broken off and that's why the cart isn't running. I didn't notice it before. Where's that supposed to bolt? Oh, right here. Okay. Yeah. All right. See, I don't know how I didn't see it. I didn't see it. So what I'm thinking happened now that I've, I'm seeing that, I don't know how the hell I missed that. Wow. I'm going to have to go back and maybe it was already, maybe it was just sitting there and I didn't see it until now. Who knows? I don't know. But I make mistakes too, guys. See, I'm human. I'm not going to take this out of the video. I thought there was a problem. What I was going to say was it's possible that the brushes are stuck in their holders in the sliders. And if that's the case, you got to take the starter generator out of the cart, take all of these dust covers off. Uh, you know, actually, I mean, take the dust covers off anyway, and then remove the rear case. I mean, you, you guys have seen me do this a bunch of times. There's other videos that I have. You'll see how, to, how I take the case off. Sometimes I just feel so stupid because it's such a simple, simple problem with the simple repair and you completely gloss over it. But, you know, that just goes to show you I'm, I'm not hiding anything from you. Being honest with you, I didn't see it. I don't know if you guys are going to be able to see what I'm doing here. Let's see. These are 10 millimeter nuts. So you might put that back here. Color temperature does not match. So things are a little funky, but that's why that fuse blew. Oh, all right, so that, nope, oh, no it's not. Okay, I thought that bottom nut was turning. You don't wanna like turn these bottom nuts because you're, you could spin the connection inside the starter generator and cause it to fail. Okay. So you're going to need a utility knife. You're going to need a crimper of some sort. This is a six gauge wire and the terminal size is, I have no idea. Do I have it here? Six gauge number 10 stud. 
is what I'm using. You could remove it from the solenoid if you need to, but you shouldn't have to. The other thing you're going to need is something to cut that cable. Now I have cable cutters that I use for pretty much cutting everything. Um, I'm going to want to, let's see here, let's get you spun over here so you can see it. I'm going to pretty much do it right here. So I'm going to cut this cable right at the original terminal. Hold on to it so I don't lose it. There you go. It leaves a nice clean cut. These cutters are a little dull. They're going to need to be sharpened or replaced, one of the two. And then I'll take a utility knife and I will gently go around the sheathing. Yeah, they make cable strippers for this kind of stuff, but I don't use them. And then I'll grab onto the sheath because I don't go all the way through, so it takes me a second. There we go. I'll pull out that much wire. Put that on there like so. I'm going to find a piece of shrink, heat shrink. I think it'll look better. See if I have any red stuff. Just put a piece of heat shrink over this. It'll make it look better. It's not going to help with, you know, anything else other than just making it look good. Um, all right, we got to undo this tape so we can pull this loom back a bit. Let me see what I'm doing, I hope. Push that on there like so. Now these crimpers are okay. They're not my favorite ones, but they do the job, they do work. But they're just not, I don't know how to describe it, they're just not very good. So I'm sliding the wire into the terminal and now I'm gonna attempt to close this, holding the wire in the ring terminal. There we go, and then squeezing down. So it makes a really nice, I don't know if you can see that in there. I can't get too close to the camera because it'll just go blurry, but it makes a really nice crimp on the cable. I think it's like a six point crimp. There. So there, it's not too bad. It's not the greatest, but it's not too bad. Ideally, you would want to get this in position so it, when it's in place, it's going to be lined up with the starter generator, but it's wire so we can twist it. I don't recommend soldering. Whoop. I don't recommend soldering these wires because this gets hot back here and it could potentially melt the solder. I will always recommend a mechanical crimp over solder when it comes to this stuff. I mean, now if you wanted to solder it after you crimped it, that would be fine. Okay, so I got this little heat gun, heat gun here that I'm going to use. And we'll uh, heat up this heat shrink and get it put back together. This isn't strictly necessary, but I try to do this when I think of it. Sometimes I just forget. Okay, this stuff does have the glue in it. I could not remember if it did or not. I know I'm probably out of shot here, but it's okay. The um, terminals back here, not having glue is not critical as if it were by the battery. There's nothing back here to uh, create any corrosion issues. Okay, so that'll run now. I'll just kind of mush that down. Ooh, that's a little warm. Okay, let that cool down for a second. Push this loom back over. Go get some fresh tape and then we'll, we'll tape that right there. So this is kind of like electrical tape, but it's more designed for taping up these looms. So let me get a little piece of this. It's like a clothy tape, but this is really, really sticky stuff. We don't need much. It rips very easily. And then I'll make one loop here, and then we'll just kind of go right over the heat shrink. So that way when it's pulled tight, like this, it will adhere just like that. So that looks really good, right? I think it does. Okay. So now, 
going to actually have to flip that around. I don't like the way that's sitting. See, I kind of put this on wrong. Actually, I could just bend that up a little bit. It won't hurt anything. Yeah, it'll work. I just got to find the... See, there's a flat washer that goes on first. And then there's a lock washer that goes on second. And let's hope that doesn't go flinging before I can get this nut started. Here we go. Okay. And now we'll tighten her down. And let's hope. Okay, don't go really too hard on these because you will strip and break those off. Okay, let's turn the... Oh, I don't like this key. Let's get this in neutral, see what happens. Ah, look at that. Beautiful. All right, that's excellent news. Started right up. Started right up, perfect. It, it was kind of spitting and sputtering a little bit because it probably had a little bit of flooding from moving it around the, on the trailer and all that stuff. Like I said, I really think now that I'm seeing the issue, I think that's what caused the fuse to pop. That terminal broke off and when it broke, it touched the case, which is ground and it caused that fuse to pop, which is a good thing. Good thing that was there. Because if it wasn't there, that would have been probably a lot worse. While we have the cart here, we're going to just check and see if the charging system is working properly. We might as well, while we have it here, right? Be a little more thorough. Go a little bit above and oh, Stupid thing. All right, let's see if you can see that. I can actually come on the other side of the cart here now. That's what we're going to do. I don't know if you can see that screen. Probably not. Yeah. All right, so just take my word for it. 12.8 volts, we're gonna do a system test. Turn off engine, or turn off loads, start engine. I don't know if this is gonna actually. That's the one thing with this machine, it does not work very well with carts because they don't have as high of current draw when you're starting them. There we go. 11.96 volts. Just kind of have it a low idle here. Oh, enter. Entering charging test. Make sure all loads are off. I'm going to give it some RPM. Look at that. 15.02 volts. Yes, Yamahas do charge at higher voltage. Turn on loads. Okay, ripple is high. There we go. See it drop down. Don't need to print. There we go. Okay, so the, the voltage is dropping. I don't know if that's coming across on camera or not, but the voltage dropped down to 14.6 volts, which is pretty close to where it should be. Uh, Yamahas do charge high. Um, you know, you're, it's, it's probably got a pretty funky ripple. It says ripple was high, but I didn't turn the loads on. I just wanted to make sure the charging system was actually working. So that was actually a very simple fix on this one guys now all i got to do is i got to put that access cover back in and the little uh, rivets and then this one's done um, if there's anything else the customer wants to do while i have it i might start the camera back up and take you for a ride on it but if not and he just wants the cart back uh, it's pretty much ready to go this is going to be a pretty inexpensive fix thankfully it wasn't anything more serious uh, i just can't believe i didn't see that broken wire you know like i said we all do make mistakes i make them just as much as anybody else does I try to be a little more observant when it comes to stuff like that, but unfortunately I just missed it. And this cart was picked up during Memorial Day weekend and it was just a madhouse around here trying to get carts ready to go back from storage. So it's just, my mind is all scatterbrain. Plus with the renovations here going on in the shop, trying to get everything brought up to code and all that fun jazz is 
a little tricky. But uh, anyway, nonetheless, this cart's done. And uh, I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions, leave them down in the comment section below. If you liked the video, hit the like button. Subscribe to the channel if you already haven't. And until next time, we'll see you in the next video.